Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4, Millennium Dawn, Modern Day Mod here today on the channel. We're back on 1.9. We're going to be starting a brand new series here today as Poland. So I think initially we want to try and rebuild the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and build Poland back up to its historic imperial height where they had like the Baltic, little bits of Ukraine here, Lvov. Um, we'll try and like take Lviv, uh, we might even go after Belarus as well, but that's easier said than done. I haven't figured out how to disable CSTO, because I would do that as well, but whatever. The Axis and CSTO are here. Alright, so January 1st, 2017. Let's see what we're working with. So, dude is in charge. We are a Christian nation. A very Christian nation, actually. Okay. So, stable growth. Let's drop that to fast. 4% on the corruption scale. Really? Okay. I thought it would be a lot higher than that. Maybe a 6 or a 5 or a 6. Alright, let's drop down to modest. International bankers, the clergy and the farmers influence Poland's internal politics. We have a large civil base. Small military spending. We can probably at least bump that up to medium. High police. Oh, okay. So it's not like extensive. Free. Basic, substantial. Okay, so our, wow, why is our economy is just doing really bad? Actually, our corporate tax rate is only at 19. We could really jump that up. Same with the population. We can put at least a 28. And maybe even put the corporate up as well. Which will cost political power. Okay, so we're semi-consumption. Volunteer force, really. I'm learning about Poland here. They're not partial draft. Or hmm. well, there's like a um, conscription. Right, okay. Interesting, interesting. Alright, what decisions have we got here? Uh, nothing overly specific to Poland itself. There's none of these international recognitions, which are probably going to help us. We Actually, we could move our embassy to Jerusalem. We'll do that. That's probably not a bad idea. Alright, so let's get the Polish intelligence agency in. Oh my god, we've only got two... Lines? Yikes. So what have we even got? So we currently produce the FB MSB Grot, and then we can get various other small arms. We've got some night vision proficiency. Vehicles wise, the Tumac. We've got some, uh, at the moment, a lot of post-war, post-Cold War vehicles that we'll have to send out. We might even try and negotiate with Korea to get some equipment and material, as in real life. We signed some agreements with them. That would be sensible and realistic. Alright, what do we got here? The Komar. So, we can't produce our own or That would be vital, actually. If we're coming up against CSTO and a lot of heavy armor, getting a... our getting our own production of anti-tank Carl Gustav M3s would be vital, actually. Because these things really pack a punch. Look at that hard breakthrough. Yeah, I kind of want to do that. Like, it actually might be imperative to do so. That's going to shred through any Soviet tanks we come up against. That's probably, like, that's actually really vital. Okay, Navy-wise, I have no idea. Uh, Air Force, we've probably got, like, access to really good tech. But we probably don't have our own decent production. And... We need to grow our base as well. We are playing on 1.9, so there's a lot of energy infrastructure we need to keep an eye on. Construction speed, factory output, and dockyard. Let's go with inorganic fibers. Recruitment and deployment. Uh, how many divisions do we have? Ninth, 18. Oh, wow. I thought Poland would have had a lot more than that, potentially. All right. So let's have a look at some of these divisions. Nothing too crazy. All right, so let's start recruiting. Get one of everything. And we'll chuck them into the capital. But already, as you can see, Poland have custom unit models in this, which is fan-bloody-tastic, if I do say so myself. Right. Let's have a look at our international market. Nothing here now. Trade. All right. So we currently 
have a surplus of four fossil fuels, seven extracting, two light, no rubber, no tech. So we're really going to be relying on a lot of external imports. Okay. Construction wise, we're currently totaling 18 gigawatts. I imagine we don't really have our own nuclear sect. Maybe we should go with heavy additional consumption. That puts it up quite a bit though. Yeah, we don't have the energy infrastructure just yet. Going with heavy additional consumption was vital in our French campaign, so we might look to go with this. At the moment, we've actually got a decent amount of civilian factories. I'm actually impressed. 18, 14 there. Um, maybe we go with an office sector first, depending on our production, which is seven military factories, which uh, is not as much as I would like. So let's go with an office sector. And yeah, I guess we try and get one in it's not going to be complete ever yikes okay so maybe we need to start off increasing our civilian capacity then all right production let's start off with getting our small arms in and let's start off with just trying to get one of everything okay we're going to slowly but surely start building a stockpile once we start conquering and annexing territory we're going to be able to get more equipment in all right logistics wise what are we working with 1.4k battle tanks, 1k armored personnel, 1k IVFs. Whoa. 37,000 small arms. That is a significant amount. Population's quite small at 34, but when we start annexing, we should be able to get more. Okay. So it looks like we're probably... Yeah, I was going to say, we could just equip everyone with a rifle, but we're not, we just don't have the manpower. And then, like, this stuff is sort of not really... Useful playing as a small faction like Poland. Alright, so... 10 armoured, 2 light. We've only got one battle tank division. We'll wait for that to fill on out, of course. Okay. One light assault. Got some special forces as well. Alright, let's have a look at the navy. So, at the moment, we have 2 frigates, 5 attack subs, 5 corvettes. Which is a lot more than what I was sort of anticipating. I thought we probably wouldn't have had a navy at all, but I guess we sort of need to protect our territory bordering the Baltic as we do border the Russians in the Kaliningrad Oblast slash Enclave. Air Force wise, what can we drop instantly? 12 Iskras, 35 Light, 22 MiG Fulcrums, that's cool. 25 MiG-23s, so they're pretty underrated. Oh wow, we've got a whopping 142 MiG-21s. So a lot of post-Soviet craft, which is nice. Okay, and Navy-wise, we're going to focus on getting attack subs eventually. So instantly we need to get more trade. We want to try and stay in the America's good graces. Uh, maybe we negotiate with like India and something here as well. Try and get a little bit of everything. Talk to Australia. And then we'll try and get stuff from Germany. Oh, we're not going to get all those goods in. Unfortunately, we're going to build more civvies. Okay, so let's have a look at our national focus. I didn't even look at this. It's probably absolutely massive. Whoa. Huge. Absolutely huge tree. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where do I even start? Where do I begin with? I don't know. I'm going to have to have a bit of a look. Well, this actually might not be a bad idea. Support weapons. Get a research bonus. So we might actually get a research bonus on that Carl Gustav equipment that we were wanting. Alright, so we're currently 80% Western Outlook as well. The PIS. The PO. Uh, we could actually maybe request some stuff from... Uh, what do we need more of? Probably tanks. It's a shame we can't negotiate with... Korea here, that would be more sensible and realistic. So maybe we try and bring in some Leopard A2s. Let's try and bring in some Challengers and the M1 Abrams. Last time we brought in Patton's, Leopard 1s and Centurions in the French campaign. We might be a little bit more on the front foot and get more air in. We don't need rifles. So we'll, we'll get the bigger and heavy, heavier tanks coming in. We can't release anyone, can we? No. I was just curious, more or less, for myself. And we've got some traits that we can start dishing out. 
So, let's drop some of these. Rightio then. Well, let's make plans and preparations to start chipping away against some of our neighbours. So, I think naturally going towards the belligerent Baltic states is the play. Bringing Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia directly under our control. Taking Lithuania, of course, so we can form the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Then we'll look to potentially go into the German, Ukrainian, French sphere of influence as well. In this alternative timeline, of course, Poland never became a member of NATO, the Northern Atlantic Treaty Alliance, in 1999. So we can't rely on the security defense and cooperation of those other former NATO members. Okay, so a lot of factions want to trade with this, which is nice. We can send our Polish workers overseas to some extent. extent. <laughs> we might even try and get down our national debt. All right, looking good. All right, let's uh, declare war upon Lithuania then. And we'll bring Vilnius back under our direct control. Let's go. I'm curious to see how big of a military they have. We'll get our navy to do convoy raiding. And we might even move it slightly a little bit north as well. Air Force, get it to operate over the top. And let's go. We're engaging one Lithuanian division on the border. Is our Polish special forces going in? We're doing really well. Poland strong. Belgium? Uh, no, I'm not going to sign a non-aggression pact, Prochenko. No, thank you. Oh, Britain secedes the Falklands. Really? Argentina have taken it. Huh. Let's move to Vilnius and take it. The Baltic Belarusian airspace. Okay. They're about to capitulate. I didn't think that had much of a fight. Only got two to five divisions against our 18. Polish supremacy is going to win on out. The Polish combined armed forces have taken the country. And we're going to full-on annex it and core it as a part of our state. We're essentially going to make a greater Poland in this series. As we don't have merely mi we don't have much military or factories. We want to try and get those really high-yield military and office sectors. We're going to continue with our conquest of the Baltic. And we're going to simultaneously declare war upon Latvia and Estonia. So once we push on through, we're going to try and go all the way to the top. And then hopefully that's all of the Baltic directly under our control. Although these nations are small, they have incredibly sophisticated military and civilian factories. Oh my god, we're nearly at Riga. Seems like Lithuania actually had more of a military than these two combined. Okay, our, na our manpower is sitting at 94k. We will have to be a little bit careful as realistically and in real life, Poland has suspended conscription and relies on a professional military nowadays. But I think even in real life, they have been talking about potentially reintroducing conscription again. Riga has now fallen. Nice. And we can take all of Latvia. No navy, though. And now we just need to take on and try and get Estonia. We are moving dangerously close now to the 
Russian sphere of influence. Super snowy now. Our units, equipment, and military material might freeze on over. Russia wants to invest. We're going to accept. Our navy isn't really doing much. Our air support is dominating as well. They're not doing anything. They need to be on close air at least. Okay, there's two units there. Three now. Fuel hasn't become an issue just yet, but we will get to a stage where a lot of nations aren't going to like me. Oh, okay, we're going to be able to stretch them here, and they will, they will start to embargo us. Okay, let's try and get over to those little islands. There's like two little islands off Estonia. I didn't even know that. Never been. Okay, I don't know. Nice. We've lost 35 poles. A measly number. Thankfully, due to our army modernization, our armed forces are incredibly well equipped with new equipment, jets, helicopters, and other military hardware. We've managed to roll over the Baltic states incredibly quickly. And now we need to look, probably look for a uh, bigger prize. But this is uh, what Poland currently occupies. Okay, so we can actually negotiate with the United States to get a package of uh, falcrum, uh, fulcrums there. So we might try and get some. It's always good getting better air power. And Germany wants to invest. We can probably try and upgrade our office sector in Krakow, which will give us more additional money. And we'll stop importing just to see if now that we've taken a lot of territory and caught it, there might be some industry there. Alright, so fair few options to go. Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine, eventually Russia and CSTO. But I think we'll make plans and preparations to bring the Czech Republic directly under our control. We could even declare war upon Slovakia at the same time, just to speed things up and make things a little bit more challenging. Alright, so we're going to declare war upon the Czech Republic. And we're going to go straight up for Slovakia as well. And just to make things a little bit more difficult. So let's see. We'll... Oh wait, why is it not... Why can't I just make a, front, a full on front line? Hang on, there we go. Do they need to be both called in? What? I'm at war with both of them. Why can't I just draw a front line all the way through? Alright, I guess we start off with the Czech Republic. This is our core territory. A little bit weird. Maybe try... What? Oh, okay. Hang on. Bear with me. The front line's stuffing up. There we go. That's a bit better. And now we can make a front line and push from all directions. <laughs> oh my god. Little bit of miscommunication. But now we're moving into Central Europe. Okay. Let's get more artillery from the US. As we continue to expand Poland's sphere of influence. So once we take... The Czech Republic and Slovakia. We're going to be able to commit more GDP to defense. And we might even be able to form our own faction for the first time. Or maybe we should puppet someone else. Because I kind of want to call this territory. We're not at a stage yet where we're strong enough on our own. And we can like rely on puppets and their base. Alright, looks like our early military exercises have worked incredibly well. We have prepared this Polish army. Alright, so let's annex the Czech Republic. Look at this. <laughs> and uh, 
We'll do the same with Slovakia. Nice. Look at this massive bohemoth of a Polish state. We're dominating. We're bullying the surrounding states. And uh, Duda is going on an absolute tirade. <laughs> So, we've buffed up our civilian and military sect quite a bit. We're going to continue on, and I think we go after Hungary now. Hungary's pretty far south, some of that territory in the Balkans. So, what I'm going to do is I might annex some of what you would consider like northern Hungary. And... Then I might pop it, and then we can make the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Alliance. So, move on the Air Force. We're not going to need the Navy, of course. But man, Polish military history is so rich. There's so many events. I really like um, the Polish army. The Battle of Warsaw in the 20s was crazy. Even their foreign volunteers, after they were annexed in World War Two, it's just really tough geopolitics for Poland being conquered <laughs> and annexed by so many various states. Mercenaries in Napoleon's army. Really cool. All right, so our energy is getting a little bit iffy now. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, oh yes, we probably can. Talk to the US for some reactor tech. I'm surprised we haven't even taken any reactors from these various states. For some reason we don't have an army commander, which is a bit weird. But, whatever. Okay, well, let's declare war upon Hungary. And take Budapest. This is probably going to be one of our first major challenges. Oh no, they're going to do 2-4 to four as well. Man, some of these divisions are nowhere near as big as our own. So, Hungary's about to fall as well. <laughs> We've taken their capital. Okay, so Belgium's not happy. Damascus has fallen. Nice. So they've capitulated. So, yeah, right. So, I think we're going to puppet them. So, they've only got four states. So, can I take... So, I can actually control Budapest. So, I might do that. So, let's take Hungary. How does that look? Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And then we'll puppet the rest. So, then we can force them to make a faction with us. One of the best ways in Hearts of Iron 4 to make a faction is to puppet someone. So I suppose it's time to now form the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. What would we call it else? I guess you could call it the um, Mesmors, the Eastern Bloc. Wasn't there one called like the Central Concordat or something? I can't remember. So is this enough characters? I think so. Nice. So, yeah, there it is. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Stretching from Hungary to Estonia. Us Eastern Europeans need to stand together. Okay. So, I suppose we go after Ukraine. We want to try and liberate those Western territories that the Soviets took from us. We want our ancient city of Lvov back. We want to take Lviv. So, let's move over there. And then, we're going to take probably a decent chunk. And then I guess we can annex the rest. Now, this is going to be a major challenge because they have probably the largest military now in Eastern Europe. Our army has experience, but... This is going to be a real big test. Then they know what's coming. This is the second time the Ukrainian president has asked for peace. Okay. So, January 2017. 
Let's continue to try and form Greater Poland. Um, I don't really know what our navy's going to do. Can they even get to the Black Sea, or are we better off just basing them there? They are focusing on the Far Eastern separatist border disputes, of course. Oh, actually, we should do this. We should continue to expand our research slots. Okay. Germany is continuing to invest. We actually uh, control Budapest, Prague, which is really nice. Okay, we're starting to make some money, so we can drop that a bit. Okay. Yikes, those guys doing crazy stuff still. Um, oh, we probably could, huh, invest in our Polish territorial defense. That's not a bad idea. And that gives us three infantry divisions. Huh. You can strengthen the eastern and western border. I suppose that will anger. Some nations, potentially. Interesting. Alright, we'll try and get more units on the border. Yeah, let's just try and train as many of them as we can. We got nearly 40 divisions. If we can get somewhere to about 50, that should be good. But we are going to be surprise attacking them pretty early on. Alright, so the United States is trying to improve relations. Let's declare war upon the Yukis. Ukraine. All right, let's go. Let's see how they react. Um, are we gonna? Why is my air force going? He's gonna try and flood over the border. The peninsula is not under their control. Finally, we can produce our own Carl Gustavs. That's gonna really help us out now. That we're coming up against proper post-Soviet equipment. They are really exposed, those T-90 tanks, to that Swedish anti-tank equipment. Okay, so we have air support over the top. Russia wants to invest, that's good. Okay. We can drop some of this. We're starting to take some territory. But they are slowly moving more troops back over to that western border. We've lost 300 now, which is going to be our biggest for the war. The wars we've had. Still pushing upon our initial claims. Our air force is currently dominating them over the west. And half of their country. Okay. This is our first real major test. They're putting up some fierce resistance. At this stage in 2017. They are probably... <laughs> compared to 2014. This 14 to 17 year gap. They actually probably have a pretty decent stockpile of western slash NATO equipment. Oh, we can actually just like annex the east. Interesting. And we can call an armistice now. Huh. Poland conquers disputed territories. No, we want the lot. So we're going down the path of terror. Okay. So now that our army's actually engaging in a full-on land battle, we're actually gaining <laughs> quite nice experience, like doctrine-wise. And, oh, so although Hungary can't produce any of those divisions, they've actually bought a Blackwater division. Which is fully equipped with American equipment. We use that. I've noticed that as well. Sometimes when you pop it, it takes quite some time for the AI to start ramping up its production again. So they sometimes just have heaps of 
money spare, so they just get more units in. Oh, wow. So they actually have 30 to 40. So this is actually a bit of a stalemate. Oh, wow. They're actually... I think the units have been upgraded visually. I can't remember in the previous 1.9 update their units operating with a yellow armband. Okay, we're winning on the borders there, but now that... Oh, wow. The Ukrainian Air Force has swung back in their aviation believe it or not, is actually dominating us. It's actually doing better than our own. Yikes. We have taken four or five tiles, though. Our fuel is going to be an issue. The Americans are going to give us fuel, though. By the look of it. Okay, that's fixed things. Lviv and some of that Western Territory is now fully under Polish occupation. The Hungarian Air Force will be able to help us as well. Wow, so we are losing the air battle over the skies. Which is probably what's slowing us down. They are starting to entrench a bit. So we're going to annex at least half of the country. And I guess we'll just pop at the rest. My, they have a lot of divisions there. Yikers. Alright, we're only three tiles away from Kiev. Um, our fuel's a little bit back and forth. Could be better. Nice. We've got some tank divisions coming fresh off the press. from Warsaw. We're starting to gain a lot of military factories here. We've actually lost 4,000 to their 17k. Okay, that's significant. Oh, I think this is uh, some of the other power plants. That's another thing. Is we can probably core a lot of their nuclear reactors and stuff. Chernobyl, Zaporizhia, whatnot. Okay, so their capital has fallen. And it's only going to be a matter of time. They've rerouted the governor ship to Sumi. Uh, okay, so we've split them there now. That to uh, liberate her son. 31k6. Okay. Got a little bit scary there when their aviation and air force was dominating us, but we've managed to swing it around. Nice. Now, thankfully, we don't have to push into Crimea. That could be an issue. Um, We've got a push here we need to fix. Hang on. How have they not capitulated? They've lost 37k. Right, let's... Uh, I don't want to send the full army around, but we need at least a couple of divisions because they've retaken Odessa. So, let's... Pop you down here. And try and retake the Maritime Headquarters. Sumi's now fallen. And nice, they've finally capitulated. Oh my. Alright, that was a uh, fascinating war. We've managed to prevail, and oh my god, the Japanese have re elected the Democratic Party. Nice. Well, oh, okay. So we only can liberate Novorossiysk. We're going to occupy a lot of this Eastern Territory. Core it. Some of it we used to own, so... I think we want something like... I want to give that to Hungary, because there's a small Hungarian diaspora like on that border as well. No, I think that's enough. Alright, um... No, I don't want to satellite... New Russia. That's a bit weird. Um... Do I want down the coast? How about... 
I kind of want Odessa. Like, I kind of want a Black Sea port under our control. We can give some territory back to Romania. Or we can give it to these guys. No. I think what I'll do... No, I don't want to give any of it to Romania. I think I want to take this territory. Does that does that make it look... Because I want, I want to call the Black Sea territory. I want to control that. If I can put my navy there. Alright, that doesn't look as weird. And then I want to... Pop at the rest. I could take their capital, but I don't think I will. Because it might hamper their production. So we'll just pop at the rest and we'll acquire. We'll commandeer the Ukrainian Navy, as it were. Italy wants to invest in the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Great. Good of them. And this is what we currently control. So those far eastern oblasts aren't in CSTO yet, okay. But we're in a really good chance now. We've managed to take two ships from the Ukrainians. Nice. Alright, well, we can probably look to potentially go after another smaller state. We're in a really good position now. That was one of our major tests going into the east. Um, oh, here. Yeah. So you actually can get Co South Korean investment. Oh, that's really cool. That's sensible and realistic. But unfortunately, a lot of these nations don't have much influence and sway over us. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get any of those deals. Over the line, unfortunately. Alright, where to go? Where to go? Um, Austria... Germany, Romania, I think it's probably the play. So let's go there. Oh, we can actually push from the Hungarian border. Hilarious. And we'll go and secure this territory. Do I have any ambition to go into the Balkans? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Liberate Austria-Hungary. <laughs> Alright, let's move around. This shouldn't take too much longer. Oh, we actually border them on that uh, Odessa border. Japan has embargoed us. Uh-oh. How are we going to import our anime? Shame. Okay. Maritime doctrine, nice. Dockyard's free. We've got a really nice amount of civilian factories now. We can convert those two military and we can we got some free dockyards so let's put subs once we get them eventually they can go straight into this armada so we're basically trying to build up a big enough coalition to eventually go against Russia and CSTO we can go with economic boom now Corruptions being reduced. As we now move into a year after starting this campaign. January 1st, 2018. Iraq joins the Axis of Resistance. Interesting. They are now forming a faction. And we have nearly 50 divisions. 48, which is a nice amount. Let's drop some of these traits into our leadership brass. And this is what we currently occupy. Let's declare war upon Romania and bring them into the alliance. They wouldn't come peacefully, so they're going to be brought in by force. Here is just a visual outer look of how big our great glorious nation is let's make sure we get some metals from russia we're going to be moving into romania now with hungary and ukraine helping us out pushing for bucharest oh wow china's at war i wonder if that's going to complicate things 
We are using Chaos AI, of course. And the world tension is sitting at 100%. Oh, we can actually see forces on the border there. Maybe our satellite technology is slightly upgraded. Got another seven more divisions dropped. Let's bring them over. And make sure we get one of everything. But we might be at a stage where we can just focus on getting more rifles. Oh, the DPR is actually justifying against us. Well, thankfully, they're not in CSTO, but if war breaks out, we might need to incorporate that separatist territory back into our puppet. Okay. They're doing an epic last stand here. The Romanians, they're trying to hold on to Bucharest. Thankfully for me, it's fallen. Nice. Okay, so do I want that Romanian coastal territory and some of the north uh, maybe those two states in the north get a Transylvanian holiday house and then continue on the coast maybe yeah I want to take that and then we'll landlock them we'll control all Navigation up the Danube and we'll puppet that so Romania can be a state as well have a bit of a buffer zone and then we can steal and commandeer their navy I guess we'll give them a bailout yikes alright so we're really nice and chunky now Moldova's there but they're probably nearly too much of a tiny and small state to really worry about. Okay, so we will need to continue and uh, keep an eye upon them. And we are going to be able to request some military forces soon at some point. I don't know why they use that Tyson Fury picture. It always gets me. Alright, we'll see if this breaks out into anything big. So, we'll move our armies to the far eastern part of our border. So, we've been sitting here keeping an eye on these separatist oblasts. And Belarus has made the decision to leave CSTO. Or they got kicked out or, or something. There is a democratic presence growing. But we've got a massive opportunity here that we really can't afford to lose. To go and attack them oh it's because yeah because oh they've gone western that's what's happened it wasn't belarus it was them oh okay and oh yeah so i guess like georgia and south ocasia okay so they've uh voted him out <laughs> i guess so that's why they got kicked out of the faction because they flipped it was that way around, not the other way. Okay, well, anyway, uh, we can bring the forests of Belarus back under Polish control. Alright, we're going to be able to push from <laughs> a multitude of directions here to take Minsk as the Poles are coming back to Minsk. Alright. Let's move everyone run over. So I wonder, I wonder when they flipped, gotten rid of the president, the separatist states in the Far East there were like, yeah, we're not going to get backed here. Our energy consumption is a bit terrible. I do want to try and push this up if we can. Uh, we just need to start building really good infrastructure. We don't have the best track record of renewables in the Far East, as it were. Okay, so there are a lot of territory on that Baltic border, but not so much in the South. Alright, let's declare war upon Belarus and liberate their people against Poroshenko. Alright, let's move on in. Distracting them in the North, more or less. 
And I think I might just annex all of this territory, to be honest. I'm pretty sure Minsk was controlled by the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Yeah, they must have. Definitely at some point. Can I request more forces? I can get one. So what do they got? A Blackwater light unit. Yeah, they tend to do that. I don't mind having our units operate with American equipment, especially those javelins. Right, Minsk is about to fall. And we are real, well and truly up on that border. They actually changed their flag slightly as well, which is interesting. Let's move here. Nice. We only lost 110 to their 6k. A glorious victory once again from the Polish MOD, the Ministry of Defense. And we can just straight up annex all of it. Nice. Very nicely gone. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this great Poland. Poland strong. Poland super state. <laughs> it looks uh, sick. It looks bloated. <laughs> but it's a, co a dominating, conquering power now. All right. Um, well, maybe we go after a major faction now. And I'm thinking we've been struggling with our energy infrastructure. And I'm eyeing off those wind farms over the border. I think it's time to go against Germany and uh, do a reverse surprise attack. Let's get vengeance on them from 1939. Right, let's head on over. We should be strong enough to go up against a state like Germany, but we've got to be careful because they can get backed and guaranteed as well. I, I think technically Britain is probably the only nation guaranteeing our independence. But if we can annex parts of Eastern Germany and then probably puppet the rest, we're going to be in a good position. As like I said, the main objective is to build a big coalition. Ultimately, build a big alliance to then uh, start going after some of the bigger players in this world. So this is going to be a real test for us. Hopefully we can get over the line. Our army definitely has the experience. Oh, wow, they're actually at war with China. They, that's That happened in the last campaign, surprisingly. That Germany guarantees the independence of Macau. And Hong Kong, I think. Alright. Yeah, we probably definitely have... Well, if they're at war, we might actually just be able to roll on in. Like, incredibly easily. If they're... Yeah, I don't know why they're... It's annoying when they're at war with a faction so far away. They might have some base somewhere where they're housing troops. I don't know. Fuel's going to be a bit of an issue, as the United States is full-on refusing, but Russia seems more than happy to comply. Well, I wish they would dissolve CSTO, because they might join our faction. <laughs> All right. So... They guaranteed the independence of Taiwan, so they're at war with China. So maybe they have, maybe a lot of their stuff is in the Far East because they've got 17 to 44. If we don't see those units there on that border quickly, wait, the Russians want to send divisions? How many? Four. <laughs> so Poland, you 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 going to try and conquer Berlin again? Yes. Oh, we want in. <laughs> um. Okay. So. They're, okay, we can kind of see in the West that they're starting to move units back. We can't get them involved, can we? No, they won't join, I'm, I'm afraid. Oh, wow. So this is actually quite big. So it's actually Japan, the States, and Germany at war with China. Oh, wow. They All three of them guaranteed the independence. What's happening over there, then? That's kind of whack. Or maybe I don't want to be at war with the Americans. If China wasn't emerging, we could have brought them in. Oh, wow. So they're actually full on in the east. So as you can see here, that's why they've got no units on this border. It's going to take quite some time to bring them back. They are moving units over here now, though, as you can see. But look at this. We are just flooding into southern and eastern Germany. Four 
expedition uh, divisions are arriving. And we might be able to just straight up puppet the majority of these guys. Berlin has fallen to the Poles. Okay. Yeah, here they come. Lost 500. They're 17. So now things are starting to slow down, but they're just not going to have any organization. We might be able to capitulate them before the German army comes back. The Bundestag is falling. Düsseldorf, yeah, that's it. They're gone. <laughs> wow, that was uh, incredibly fortunate. We had a harder time in Ukraine than in Germany. A far technology superior faction. It's just because they were, they were there. They didn't have to come back. Wow. Okay, that worked. Um, I guess I want to call this <laughs> fully for myself. Is that too much? I I, I kind of want it. <laughs> I kind of want to control it. I want all those juicy factories. And then like in the south here, because we don't want to fully annex Germany. Having them as a puppet is still useful. Oh, no, I don't think I want Bavaria as a state. That hasn't really seemed to help. I think we just want Germany. We'll take their navy, though. As we've landlocked them. Nice. We do want them to be able to create some army. We're going to be able to take 27 ships. Yikes. Got 50 ships now. We didn't really even engage in the uh, Baltic Sea. Okay. And... Let's now make sure we're going five military factories for each. We're all, for each. We're also stealing a bunch of equipment and material. Uh, probably go with convoys now. There. We've got those Hamburg production facilities. Nice. So the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth has well and truly grown. Germany has capitulated. We can buff up the corporate tax now. As we've taken Germany's sector. And where do we go now? I think we can probably go after France. Bringing them in might be a smart play. You, we could even go into Scandinavia potentially. We do have a land bridge to Denmark. But I think going after the French while we're here wouldn't be a bad idea. We're already on the border. The Maginot Line has been well and truly dismantled. And Emmanuel Macron won't know what hit him. <laughs> what is this? Germans and Poles on the border? Okay, let's make sure we get our fuel stockpile back up a bit. We're starting to get to a point where we're just getting embargoed by everyone. <laughs> so, and we're about to bring them under our control. In this alternative timeline, we're going to have French mercenaries fighting for us. <laughs> Instead of Poles. Alright, they've capitulated. Very nice. So, um, you know what I could do? Is I could give some of that border Lorraine territory to the German state, like there. There we go. And then I can puppet mainland France. I don't want it. We'll look to grab their overseas territory, though. I think we take Guyana. <laughs> Create Polish Guyana would be quite funny. Uh, New Caledonia. I'm sure there's some other ones as well. So, let's pop it all this. So, we can satellite French Guyana. Yeah. But I want to pop it all of that. We won't control it, but we'll have it directly under our command. And then everything else, I just straight up annex... We're also commandeer the French Navy. And we might be able to get to a point where we're going to have two army, a fleet, uh, two fleet groups, ideally. We took nine states. Germany took one. France being puppeted in the end. And we've brought in this fellow. Okay, so now we nearly have a hundred ships under our control, which is a super vast navy. Let's move it to 
our home base in the Baltic. Singapore and Malaysia at war. Interesting. And this is what we currently core and control as Poland. Polish Guyana. <laughs> Weird thing. If we ever need to go into South America to secure resources and fuel, we can. Same with Australia as well. Now that we have New Caledonia and a island in the south. Well, I guess we make plans and preparations to go eastward. Spain, Italy, the UK. I think we'll leave them. We could potentially go into Scandinavia, but we've got a huge land border here with CSTO and the Russians. I think it's time to go to war with them. CSTO has been a little bit dismantled as half of them have flipped pro-Western, while the other ones are still emerging. So I don't know if Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan and maybe some of the former post-Soviet states will join them, but we'll see. We probably have naval supremacy now. We have a bunch of nations with us. Germany has a bunch of volunteers. We might request some of them, maybe. I think focusing on the Baltic and... What? Belarus ter territory? That we control is probably the best way to push. We also need to remember the Kaliningrad Oblast as well. Alright, well, let's swing on over. Yeah, so Germany has a decent amount, same with France. I would rather them control their units, because then they can use their own equipment and supply. But sometimes what happens, even if you're at war, they do tend to be a little bit docile. A... Just a little bit... Not aggressive, really. They just sort of sit back and protect their own core territory rather than trying to push and take more of ours. Alright, let's re-swing the Air Force. So, coming up against CSTO, going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I reckon our Navy's going to be able to outmatch them. We'll start convoy raiding in and around the Baltic Sea and the Black Sea. So we're going to be able to stop a certain amount of resources getting in. Probably tech metals, but the Russians do have a huge economy. They don't really need to import crazily amount of stuff. They're, they're pretty self-reliant resource-wise, unfortunately. Just because their territory is so vast and big. They have a lot of stuff that they can rely on. Air Force and Aviation. It's going to be tricky. Uh, they have the numbers. What is it? 2018. We will have a decent amount of Air Force, but we're still very much in the post-Soviet hangover, as it were. Although we joined NATO in the 90s, we're still phasing out MiG and other post-Soviet equipment. We're not operating with the, the top tier, like the best of the best fighters and stuff, so that's going to be difficult to some extent. So I don't know how the Air Force and aviation battle is going to go. Manpower-wise, we're looking good. Just under 500k. We're going to be able to build up our fuel department. And manpower-wise, I don't know. Would a, cent like a, a country this size, a united Europe somewhat, would have the same manpower? Maybe. We actually have some T-72s there. We do have a little bit of uh, German and Leopard equipment, but as you can see, most of these divisions are still... The T-72s, the majority of them. We've got the occasional Bradley and Amram. So far, our logistics has built up quite a bit. Our IVFs could be better. We've managed to take a lot of equipment, but this is basically it. This is make or break. They've gone Western Outlook now, and the time is nigh. War between Poland and Russia is about to begin. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Going against a major faction and a major, major power. Hopefully, France, Germany, Hungary, Ukraine are with us. Alright. Oh, so precious metals. I forgot about the uh, 
Kaliningrad Oblast, didn't I? Might be okay. We might be able to use it as a bit of a bait, actually. Once we get our resources going. It might draw some units in. Alright, we'll unpause in a sec. Man, getting a consistent and reliable amount of fuel is annoying. Okay, now we're getting it. Right, pushing there well. Focusing on the Belarus and Poland border primarily. Okay, so we'll send an army back down. If we can take St. Petersburg, a lot of that coastal territory would be big. All right, let's move on back. Liberate the old Prussian territory. Liberate Konigsberg. And unfortunately, already, it doesn't look good for the Polish Air Force. Along with the German and Hungary. A nice St. Petersburg has fallen and we're pushing into the old former Finnish territory in and around Karelia. Okay. They're only one tile away from Vilnius. They've actually liberated Riga. The Russians, surprisingly. We're gonna have to try and put a stop to that. Nice. That upgraded support equipment that we commissioned is finally here. Britain moves left. Interesting. They're gonna bring in Jeremy Corbyn. Yikers. Okay. So, it looks like they're not focusing at all in Kaliningrad. I think it's because we've seized all of Russia's western Baltic territory. So they can't flood in units. Okay. Everything so far seems to be going to plan. Slowly but surely. Advancing in the treacherous Far Eastern conditions. Gaining a couple tiles here and there. Just need to reallocate and draw you slightly. Uh, we're still only a couple tiles away, tiles away from Moscow. Wow, we've lost 70k to their 25. Yikes. Oh shit indeed, that's not good. French, German infantry's moving up. But they seem to be not as holding as much in the south. The AI has seemed to take the initiative though. I was saying before that they tend to sit back, but at least they're coming up to help. Well, that was nice of them. Okay. We're really struggling down in the south on that Ukraine border. I think the I think it's just too long. They weren't involved in the war with the Chinese and the US, so it's not like they probably had a bunch of units in the Far East. They would have had some territory in and around Vladivod's Vladivostok. We're getting to the point now that we probably just need more divisions. Because that front line is widening so much. We've got the equipment spare. We probably just need physical units on the ground. And I'm kind of tempted to drop them if we can. I know they're not going to have the experience and the train. And they won't have all the equipment. But hey, in my opinion, it's sometimes better to have a weak unit on a tile than no one. We have the manpower to soak up any issues that are caused by it. Okay, so, so far on the initial surprise attack, our own Polish special military operation is <laughs> doing okay. 
So it looks like the oblasts in the east are chilling, as it were. They haven't seemed to be drawn in. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to have to redraw this slightly. Um, it's going to get to a stage that if we can't push anymore, we might need to just try and hold, dig in, and entrench from the positions we've taken. But, hmm. I feel like the longer this war goes on, this could be ours to lose. Now that winter's set in. Taking St. Petersburg is a massive boon, though. Having the city under Polish and German control is massive. I might actually request all of those forces from France and Germany, because they do have some sitting back there, although they've been okay to some extent. We need... I, I think we need one full control of our alliance slash armed forces. We need to be um, moving, fighting, conquering in one big old unison. Or otherwise we're going to have some issues. So let's get the units brought in from the German Bundestag. Get them up on the border. If we could take the capital, that would be a massive morale debuff for them. I'm sure that would shock their populace. Oh my god, what is that? The winged hussars are back! <laughs> They're back trying to get to Moscow. And there's French and Germans with them. Germans? You mean Prussians? Y yes, same difference. Okay, our navy hasn't really done too much. Oh, they're actually pushing down in the south. They've managed to liberate Mikolaev and Kriviri. Okay. Pushing out from the peninsula. Gotta watch out for that push. Okay, it's ballooned to 91. The Germans are starting to lose a bit now. They're sitting at 36. One, two, three. Oh, we're actually losing on five of those tiles. Yikes, we're not getting any rubber in. Uh, the EU isn't in this. That's a weird thing, so I guess we'll go with that. We've managed to get an economic boom going, which is nice. So we are getting some air power, but we're actually losing a bit. Oh my god, they're about to cut me off here. We're really getting pushed back in the south. They've taken Kharkiv and Belgorod. They're really focusing here. Although we have... St. Petersburg. I think what's happening, it's their air power is operating. We've lost 100k, they've taken out 41. Ukraine's about to capitulate again. Hmm. We're just trying to hold and bunker in. But, at the moment, if our navy isn't needing to hit their convoys, we can't get anyone in, can we, to help us? So they're currently at war with China. They're guaranteeing the independence of a lot of nations, not us though. They're in an alliance with... It was Germany before, but now the Japanese, okay. I think we just need to try and hold as long as we... Oh no, oh wow, we've just been crushed. Oh my god! Oh no! You lost a bunch of divisions there, yikes. 
they're really focusing on the south. And they're doing quite well. Oh, no. Is this going to be the same as in the French campaign? Man. Yeah, divisions-wise, they probably have slightly more than us. We got about... We, we had... No, we probably had about uh, 70, 80 or so. So they probably had 30 more divisions than us. What I was going to say, is it once again going to be the... Domination of the Russian Air Force and aviation. It's just so strong and so broken in this mod. It's the second time we've been caught. We're still holding St. Petersburg, but we've just like been pushed in the south massively. I guess they're focusing on it. The Southern Army group is just not holding. Still holding St. Petersburg now, though. It's interesting that they're pushing for that. We were four tiles away, from now we're five. And we're about to probably lose some of that Romanian territory. Damn! We're gonna try and... stop the retreat. We've gone into 47. But they are just crushing our divisions. As we're trying to hold. Okay, a little bit of a push here now, though. The R Romanians are trying to go for it. Hmm. Maybe I should have waited a little bit longer. I can't get them in, no. I might try and improve relations with the Americans. Maybe we should have incorporated a couple more nations. Maybe some of the Baltic the Balkans. Let's try and drop some more. Try and stop this. The problem is, even though we took a lot of ground early on, as this war has gone on, it's actually moving to their favor. Yeah, I guess we maybe needed to focus on our air force a little bit more. Maybe bringing in Finland might have extended it even more. Yeah, yikes. I do think, though... This new update in 1.9 has made the Russians very, very strong. They're very formidable. I've noticed a difference in the rework. Because normally when you sit about this side with the divisions, size with the divisions in the Air Force, you've actually got like a reasonable chance to beat them. Maybe you need to be a little bit more slow and methodical and build up. If you want to go against them, now they've got a rework. Okay, we're holding in the south a little bit better here. We've managed to liberate Odessa. Well, we've lost a general there, which is unfortunate. This is brutal. Uh, anything in the tech tree that can kind of save us? Not really. Can't request any more divisions. Oh, that's another thing as well. We actually haven't got, gained that much land doctrine skill, which is surprising how many nations we've taken out. So, now it looks like in this 1.9 update, you definitely need more than 50 or so divisions. Maybe even double. You need a stronger air force rather than a post-Soviet one. Let's 
They're still holding St. Petersburg. Oh my god, they are really surging in the south. I don't necessarily know why they're being so successful down there. About to wipe another bunch of units that are stuck. They can't get to Odessa. We're holding on this river crossing now. In what was former Romanian territory. To be fair, they did have the peninsula under their control. It wasn't under ours, so they were able to push from there quite well. Can't offer a ceasefire or a peace. I'd nearly give them that if they want it. Okay, now they're pushing. Now they got the idea they're going to push all the way. To Warsaw again. Oh no. Carve and seize and take the eastern part of our country. Still holding... St. Petersburg while they take Lviv. Okay, now our equipment's gone absolutely shocking. Um, yeah. Not really much we can do. I've moved the army down to the Black Sea. See if they can change things, but... We are not in a good position here. As the Russians flood over the plains. Western outlook as well. Yeah, like in the Baltic we did so much better. Look at that. Northern Army Group did pretty and well, pretty well with their entrenchment. Center held a little bit, but nowhere near, nowhere far as near as the south. I don't think reshuffling our aviation was an idea either. I think they just had better, a better air force than us. Shame. It was also an offensive war after all. So I guess we'll just try and hold as much as we can. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Just try and drop more. We just need them now, otherwise we're going to capitulate. We can try and promise peace. We might be able to come to an armistice agreement, I don't know. They can take and call some of those eastern states if we can hold on to the rest. <laughs> We're still holding St. Petersburg <laughs> as our empire crumbles around us. Fuel hasn't become an issue yet, but it soon will be. Oh, God. Romania has fallen. Ukraine has fallen. Hungary's getting there. Duda, what have you done? Um... We could recognize China, maybe? No. It would only be if the Brits or the Americans or someone declares war upon someone. We might better get out of this. But no one wants to guarantee our independence. Oh, we've got some naval engagement now. Oh, nice. So we've managed to take out two Russian ships in the Black Sea. I don't even know what to go with here now. Maybe go with third generation tank hole. 
Yeah, so... Oh, wow, what is this? I haven't even looked what's happened over here. Okay, so they are now in control. Oh, so yeah, right, the Americans want... So... Are you... Oh, okay, yeah, right, because there was a Korean War as well. The United Peninsula. We'll try and improve relations. So they puppeted... Northern China, by the look of it. Interesting. So that's what they caught in the end, and they liberated the rest. I'm going to try and continue to improve relations. It'd be either them or their puppets that could help us out on this eastern side. I oh, see so their capital is now Taipei. Interesting. Can't bring in the Japanese as well. Can't tempt them with... Hey, you can have the... What are they called? Coral Islands, Carol, Carol Islands, like okay, something K. Uh, Bucharest has fallen, bro. Oh. Now that they've gotten their front lines set up and their army in cohesion, oh my god, <laughs> their aviation is just crushing me. Oh my god. And Warsaw has fallen. Oh my god. We've lost 20%. We're 21% towards capitulation. Yikes. Um, this is a bit of an oof. Maybe, I don't know. Go for death and glory. Take him out. Our units are getting... What they say in the business. Fried. Try and go on a counter-attack, because holding didn't seem to work. Beat us Air Force-wise. Our Air Force got crushed. Our Navy, which was one of our strengths, just wasn't really vitalized. We took some initial gains and tried to hold them, but as the war went on, a defensive one, the Russians have now gained the ascendancy. Maybe the Germans... Maybe the French could have sent more units and been a little bit more proactive. Same with their air force as well, potentially. Could have invested more in the Polish land doctrine. Oh, hang on. The states have attacked the Philippines. This can work. Hang on. Because what I can do is I can go down and declare war upon them and say, hey, we'll back your war. So their puppet... Northern China is going to help out. So where is it? Is it here? No? They're not at war with them. There's a civil war? Hang on, let me try and figure this out. They're at war with someone, though. They didn't make peace. Who are they at war with? They are. Yeah, it's in the south here. So we'll declare war upon them. And now we can invite the Americans in. Yes, that's what we want to do. Oh my god, they're going to try and save us again. Save Europe. Oh my god, we lost 370k. So, the Americans are in our alliance, but they haven't been called in. And I don't know if they want to be. As there is a massive land war going on in Europe. Poles, Germans, French. Doing it again. The Soviets, I mean, the Russians are doing quite well. But, will they be able to save us? I don't know. They've been quite active, though, in China, so they might be keen to come in. So, Warsaw has fallen. Some of the Baltic states, not so much. Yeah. It's interesting that a lot of this southern and central territory has just like not held but towards the north in and around the Baltic and St. Petersburg we've been holding like so much better all right we're gonna have to shift all of our recruitment strategy to Berlin as we can't even deploy these units now in our core territory which is awful so we're gonna have to drop them down in Berlin but we just need to try and Hold on. Hold on as much as we can. Until the 
Americans. The Amatakonskis arrive. Or maybe not, they might not come. And we can just straight up be capitulated, potentially. Will they save the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth? No faction. Oh, the Philippines are capitulated anyway. Oh my god, we're so close to falling. Ah, oh, they were actually looking to maybe annex central China now, as they have their puppet in the north. Right. They have an election soon, though. We'll try and give them all of our civilian and military satellites. Yeah, they don't want to come in. That's so annoying. So we're just trying to get better relations, but they are still refusing to join this war. Maybe the Americans won't come and help us. Maybe we have to live in the bed we made. France has lost a good amount. Look at this. They also have air supremacy over the top, so it's helping them. But at the moment, this is showing off Millennium Dawn modern day version 1.9. Wow. The Russians, even with their rework, they've been from they've been like really, really strong. Like I've had, I've played a couple campaigns on 1.9. The Russian rework just makes <laughs> everything better for them. All right, so I think. Oh, okay. So it looks like the Americans have taken the mantle of faction leader in this Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Oh my God. Well, now that we've liberated our territory, we might be able to get units back. Our navy is currently in the south. The Americans are moving in. Nice. We can actually put our infantry back in. I'm, I'm curious to see, now that they've liberated this European territory, are they going to be able to just go and conquer the rest of them in the Far East? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. All right, let's try and drop this. Our equipment is, well, spent. We're in a fuel crisis. Let's try and set this back at our capital. It was moved to Berlin at one point. <laughs> it might take a while, but basically we are, for, more in, for all intensive purposes, just spectating the Americans at the moment. But they're doing quite well. Them, Germany, and the Japanese at one point were in a... Essentially, I wouldn't say a faction. It was more of a coalition. As uh, Taiwan declared its independence. They backed them, all three of them. They're at war and toppled the uh, CCP. Um, I guess we'll... Try and put some of that personal stuff on. Just try and do whatever. I don't know if it's really going to matter that much. <laughs> Getting those small little differences. It's going to take so long before we get control of a proper field army again. What do we get to? 50, 60 or so in the end? So in this war, as the Americans are basically going to win it for us. We did quite well early on, but we kind of threw... We will have to give them huge chunks and swaths of Russia if they do win. Okay, so... Oh, this is really interesting. So they're doing a lot better in Europe. However, in northern China, which they full-on occupy, they are holding a tense border in the far east on Vlad of Vladstok. We've lost 400k. They're hitting 100 now. 160. Okay, things have started to slow down slightly. We're also getting a little bit of lag for some reason. That doesn't tend to happen to me. Usually my PC is more than capable to play Hearts of Iron 4 and also Millennium Dawn is... Uh, it, it, just, it just takes a lot of performance compared to some of the other mods, but overall it's usually fine. I am using recording software as well, so it's usually a bit laggier. Yeah? Alright, they've liberated Romania. And now they're slowly but surely 
pushing into what was that former Western Ukrainian territory, right? The Americans have liberated the Baltic states. Oh, and then they might actually be able to take St. Petersburg. Alright, we've got some units now. <laughs> they are very, very raw and fresh. I don't know how effective they're going to be. We'll just try and bring them up onto the front line as we go into October 2022. Duda is back. We weren't the Polish government in exile. We were at one point. <laughs> I think they like fled to mostly former allied states in World War II, didn't they? But yikes. Major powers and um, factions in this mod are definitely the best. Oh my god, we're getting some weird stutter. Okay, so now that we're starting to reclaim our old Polish airfields, we can reallocate, reallocate our air force. That's what it is. I wonder if they've reworked how aviation and air supremacy and close air support is calculated. Obviously, realistically, in real life, it's insane. Like, you need it. Combined arms is key, but you definitely need an air force. That's definitely up there on the priorities. Okay. They're pushing through the thick Far Eastern forests. Alright. Mm -hmm. Mongolia is capitulated? What? Oh, right. <laughs> they declare war upon the Chinese. Uh, okay. Uh, right, we're starting to push into some of that core Russian territory, Sm Smolensk. I'm just trying to push our divisions on a spearhead to Moscow if we could take it, that'd be big. We might be able to take it. No. <laughs> Can't quite get there. No, we're so close. Oh, wow. The Americans have fully abandoned that border. What? Oh, no. Maybe not. Wait. Okay. Maybe it's deceiving. Oh, they brought in the Far Eastern Oblasts. There's a front line there. Maybe we don't have access to their satellite intelligence. And we can see here because we've got, like, literal units here. But Moscow has fallen to the Polish-Lithuanian slash American Commonwealth now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. A little bit laggy all over the place. Alright, pushing into those Far Eastern Oblasts. The peninsula is now under our control. Crimea. Uh, the capital has been pushed back to Kazan. Just need to go there and steal all the gold reserves. <laughs> were, they, were they Poles? No, they were Czechs, weren't they? In uh, World War One, when they got the reserves. Or the Civil War, rather. The Russian one. Okay, our equipment's coming back up. Nice. We're slowly but surely dropping and bringing more equipment in. That's another thing as well. I've noticed in 1.9, I wonder if they've tweaked it. Have... Like, the... Gar like, um... Have they changed... How often nations guarantee the independence... 
of certain nations. Alright, let's keep moving. Oh my god, we're getting surrounded here a little bit. As we move into January 2021. I wonder if having that border in the fight, like that, that puppet has changed things. It's actually made the Russians focus more over there. Well, they just need to pop on over to Vlad of Ladstock and uh, take it quite easily if they need to. It shouldn't be too much of a issue. Okay. Oh, they're really surging. Can't see them coming back from this, but man, the Russians kind of threw this one. They got so close, they only needed to take out France, and then they would have just needed to swat back American naval invasions. But maybe the Americans are even stronger because they've had that army experience in China early in the campaign. Uh, they declare war upon someone. Okay. I'd say about 40% towards capitulation. Also, they went Western Outlook in this. The Russians, so... That probably didn't help them. They had nowhere near the height of what was CSTO. Like, even Belarus abandoned them pretty early on at one point. Yeah, maybe they're just not pushing there. I'm assuming they got units there, because why aren't they just, like, flooding into northern China? Okay, we're about to surround some of them there. Looks like Georgia is like... Formed its own Northern Caucus Alliance or something. It's done its own weird little thing there. Cool. My god. I might have to restart my game. It's not terrible, it's just like a weird little stutter that happens. Oh, okay, they've knocked out 200k of them ever so often. Yeah, what is happening? There we go. <laughs> Poland's looking a bit bigger. I think it's... Uh, uh, sure, we'll accept that. Why is there an African faction there? To be fair, the axis of resistance is growing quite well. We're about to win and conquer the majority of the Caucasus. Bringing that under our control, but I can't see them coming back from this. Unless there's some exceptional hold in the Urals. Where they just like somehow bunker on in. It's going to be incredibly hard. For them to come back from this one. It's only going to be a matter of time. Before we get to partition Russia. Ah, oh, but now the Americans are in our alliance. They are not embargoing us fuel-wise. It's a nice issue to not have. We can request more. Give them to me. But once again, America. Op. American busted. <laughs> Maybe I need to do a American 1.9 campaign. Let me know in the comments. Feedback and suggestions, of course. And other nations you would like me to let's play. Abkhazia has now capitulated. Okay. Um, let's try and get some more in. <laughs> Berlusconi's been elected again. Ah, oh, good. That crisis in the Suez is now being cleared. Let's try and get some more resources here. Back up to a million. Okay. Yeah, they ain't coming back from this one. It's only a matter of time. Hmm. We might have to skip ahead in a moment because this is like really laggy. Do I have to put it down to four? 
maybe five is creating an issue. Maybe there's just too many units going about. Our Western support has swollen quite a bit. The non-aligned slash writer powers have gained some influence in Poland, which uh, is not good, as we do want to try and stay somewhat Western. <laughs> Turkey has declared war. Great, just what we need. I don't know if that's going to complicate things. Uh, we can't invite them in, either one of them. Maybe. Um, oh, okay, right, yeah, so we should be... Hang on. Oh, we can't invite them in because we're not the lead? It's because we capitulated. Well, hang on. We can take over the faction if we spend 200 political power. Because I think I turned it off, didn't I? Because that was one of the game rules. We disabled NATO. We disabled the EU. But we can take control, but they can't. So, interesting. So maybe they w were bugged and they couldn't really act as much. Anyway, Hillary Clinton's been elected. <laughs> she is funding this war against the Russians. Bizarrely. Kazan hasn't fallen. They're still going. Okay, so there's a little bit of border conflict there now. So maybe we can see a bit better. Interesting. So now we're back in control and in the driver's seat. Nice. Yeah, I guess because we capitulated, it went to the next biggest faction, which was the States. Nice. Kazan has fallen. And it's only going to be a matter of time before rest, the rest of the country does as well. A little bit of airfield assets at the back. Still haven't taken all of that Karelia slash Mamansk region. Oh my god, these freezes are starting to get a bit on my nerve. Right. Oh, hang on. Georgia has embargoed us. Yeah, they made a faction. <laughs> I knew they had like a puppet and stuff. The Mountain Alliance for Justice. Hilarious. It's because Abkhazia. So Abkhazia, South Ossetia, Georgia have made their own free and uh, independent nation. We're getting some flickering as well. I don't know what it is. All right, I've skipped a little bit ahead. Seven months, and they are on the brink of capitulating now. They are so, so close. I think this is it. But, yeah, I'm having really bad issues. I think there's just too many units going on. Hey, they finally capitulated, so we can partition them. Took us another seven months, though, which is quite a bit. I was getting all these weird lags. It's, is it even, like, taking a while now? I wonder if it's they've updated 1.9. There's more assets and stuff. Also, I feel like this is, like, a full-on world war. Like, for all intents and purposes, all, like the Chinese and all of other factions were in. All right, where do we begin? Um... So, I think we give a lot of this former Ukrainian territory back to them. I think we give them the the, uh, the steppes and the Caucasus as well, under their control. We'll give those provinces that rebelled. Um, they're still dealing with rebellion at Kharkiv for whatever reason. Uh, we need to take Kaliningrad back to us. We'll get Konigsberg under our control. And I kind of want some of this territory for my own. Do we take Moscow under our direct control? Probably. And probably like that. We'll call that for... Maybe we'll call that for like Greater Poland. Nice. Um, I will look to... Uh, actually, no, how about... How about we puppet Karelia? I don't want to give them... I don't want to... I'd rather make some bigger one-off states than, like, heaps of smaller ones. So let's get... Karelia liberated. We'll make it its own, like... Independent peninsula... Kingdom. Like Finland or something. Oh, we want the Black Sea port there. Because it's its own tile. Which is really interesting. Huh. Alright. In the east... I guess we... Essentially... Give it all to the Americans. They deserve it. We want to try and give it all of Siberia. All of that territory that was in and around. 
Alaska to be directly under their control. So all the east. And I guess we just keep on going. And try and give as much as this territory to them as we can. And then I think what we'll do is we'll pop at a Russian state somewhere near the Urals. So I want to give as much of this territory to them because they basically deserve it. Or it's directly under their administration. They can set up an own overseas territory here. There we go. So they can even have territory that borders Karelia. Um, I think I take that in the north. We'll try and make this a little bit less border gory and we'll give that to the Ukrainians. And then that will be a Russian puppeted state. And that can be like Novgorod, essentially. And we'll try and take their ships. Oh, the Moscow, the Moskva survived. Rip. <laughs> we'll take that. And I guess there's the rest of the navy as well. I'm sure the Americans will probably take some of it. Nice. That's it. Oh my god. So the United States took 38 states. And uh, there we go. Look at this. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. <laughs> Massive. A little bit of a change of plans in this series. A spanner was sort of thrown into the works. But, uh, interesting series playing as Poland. Alright, unfortunately on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. I don't know who that is. <laughs> but, uh, once again, Big Bad, Big Daddy America saved the day again. Good on him. God bless America. Bless up. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, let me know if you're back in suggestions in the comments, other campaigns and series you would like me to do. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic resty day. My name has been Simsy, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.